Hi, my name is Nick. I'm going to be doing some installation training today on Viva synthetic thatch on an open wood frame structure like this behind me. This structure here I've built it represents most of the common uh, situations for installing synthetic thatch and that's eave, field, hip, valley, gable end, and a ridge. The Viva synthetic thatch system is consistent of two pieces. We got the field shingles and the hip and ridge. So everything we're going to do on this roof is to be done with those two pieces. Here's the field shingle, and here is the hip shingle, hip and ridge. So we use this piece uh, primarily for hips, ridge, and sometimes for some other decorative things. We'll show some details on that further on. When we open a box of Viva, it's going to be packaged with five shingles to the right, five shingles to the left, five shingles to the right, five shingles to the left. That's how they're stacked in there. I always grab these things out, stack of five. You'll notice that when they're in the box, they get kind of compacted during shipping. What we want to do is we want to really loosen these things up for a more natural appearance when we go to install it. So what I, my, my practice is that I always take them out of the box five at a time like this. We can install the Viva thatch with actually just regular coil roofing nails. We always recommend using a stainless steel ring shank uh, roofing nail, inch and a quarter usually is the... Uh, is the best for the for the purlin size. So I'm just using a regular coil roofing nail. You can also use screws. Screws in a drill work just fine, obviously a little slower. All right, we begin at the eave. So one quick detail for all of the shingles with the, the eave and the field. This shingle has like a little fold line right here. You can see right here on the top of the shingle. That little flap that you see here needs to be folded underneath like that, okay? Now, this is the top part of the shingle. This is the bottom. So this pattern right here is what you see from the interior. So this little flap gets folded down. There's nail indentations, these little location points here, 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 and here. Six per shingle. That's where our nails are going to go. The nail gun, the head of the nail gun fits right there inside that little indentation and lines up perfectly. The eave consists of a three course eave detail. The first piece goes on right here onto the, to the second purlin up, okay? We want this por uh, portion of the shingle to come all the way over to the center line of the hip. So that comes all the way over here. The first course, you only need to tack a couple of nails into that to, to just to hold it on until the third course goes over the top of it because the third course will actually go directly on top of this. So for the moment, we only need to put a couple of nails in there to secure it. Anytime we have a end joint like this, we want to make sure we're overlapping minimum two inches. Again, I'm only sticking a couple nails in there just to tack these, uh, this first course on until the second and third course goes on top of it. It'll be nailed through that again. The second course eave detail this is the one that gets a little tricky that a lot of people kind of don't quite understand. So what I'm going to do, do with the second course is I'm actually going to lay this on top of the first course. And I'm going to install this thing by nailing it through both layers here down into the first purlin. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to vary the height of this. So I'm going to maybe angle it up, down, and this is creating, for the eave detail here, creating that a perfectly straight line. So if I was to install this in a perfectly straight line, I would get a pretty consistently, uh, pretty consistent line there on my eave. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to actually install them a little bit random. So I also want to make sure that I'm offsetting my joints. And so I started with a full shingle here. My joint is here for the first course. If I go with a full shingle again, I'm going to be lining right up again. So what I do a lot of times is I'll just go ahead and uh, cut the shingle right in half. Start with a half shingle. I'll use that other half up, you know, down at the other end or in another spot. So, just keeping my joints offset. And again, I'm shooting through both layers here. And you can kind of see I'm putting this at a little bit of an angle. And I'm doing that on purpose. Now, you notice that I'm not folding this little fold on this one. I'm not nailing up here, so it doesn't even really matter. I can just leave it just as it is.
All right, so the third course of our Eve detail goes right on top of the first course. So I'm going to take a shingle, I'm going to fold it just like that. And again, I'm offsetting my joints. I'm starting again with a full piece here because my last joint was here. Now I'm going to nail every nail spot in this one. It's going to be going through both layers there. So that's why the first course around we only installed a couple of nails just to hold them in place. Now as I come across, you notice that I'm leaving off this last nail here. The next piece will pick, pick up that nail location. But as I go, I'm always going to, as I'm coming across, I'm going to nail across the top. And I'm going to drop down right here at the end of the shingle. And I'm going to nail a nail through this shingle into the lower purlin below it. So, so eight inches down here. Right there. Now my next shingle will come right over the top of this right here. So as you can see, we've got quite a bit of volume going here on the eave. Um, all of this, I kind of manipulate it as I go. So as the pieces go on, you see I kind of got this piece cluttering up here. You'll actually see once we get going that that actually creates a lot of natural texture in the eave detail. We get a nice full looking eave. I always kind of come through this thing and give it a nice little... Our three-piece eave detail has been complete. We installed this all the way over to the center line of the hip. We're going to move on now to the field courses. For the field, we actually want to maintain about a three-inch over the center line of the, of the hip. That's going to make it easier when we come back and put the, the hip shingles on. Makes them easier to blend together and less trimming. I'm also going to keep the fasteners um, for these shingles a, a few inches away from the center line of the hip and that we'll see further on makes it easier for installing the hip shingles. Always making sure we're coming across the top here. We'll leave the last one off. This next shingle will catch that. We'll make sure we're dropping down and putting this nail right here. Again, we're always maintaining our two inch overlap on the ends here. You'll notice here on the end, I'm actually running these field courses just kind of off the end. I'm leaving that length there because we're going to come back when we do the, the gable end and wrap those around that rafter. So I'm always leaving about a foot or so. I kind of predetermine what I need there. This one here, I probably only need about maybe eight inches, but typically on a installation, I leave at least a foot overhanging so I can wrap that around on that gable end.
right, I've got my field shingles all the way up here to the ridge, but as you can see, I've got this just flat plastic area of the shingle showing. The ridge shingle will not cover all of that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a field shingle and I'm going to actually install it, extend it up past the ridge. So I'm going to shoot for maybe about six, eight inches of that shingle going up like that. And I'm just going to nail that right across here, right in the ridge like this. Then when I come, I'm just going to trim the top of the shingle off flush with the top of the ridge there. I've got my field uh, shingles installed here, and I've got all of my shingles installed roughly three inches over the center line of the hip. Now if I had any that were farther than that, this would be the time to trim them. So the first thing I do, if there is any that are long, I trim them so they're three inches over the center line. But then I start at the top, I go ahead and just cut these corners off in line with the center line of the hip. So I'm just starting up here. And see, I've got a pretty consistent pattern there. I've got my three inches over, but I've got the corner trimmed off. And that'll help us when we go to put the hip shingles on, blend this corner nicely. All right, quick tip on stocking the roof. You can actually take these shingles and just toss them up onto the roof like that, and they'll stay there. Obviously, this little roof here is kind of small, so I can't keep them right here in the middle of my work area. But just for a efficiency tip, you can just throw those up on the roof like that. They stay up there quite nicely. When I'm installing the field, I'm always making sure that my uh, joints don't line up. So I'm always going to be trying to keep a minimum uh, eight inches offset to each to each uh, course. Uh, once you kind of get a stair step going, obviously it becomes quite easy to maintain that pattern. Um, I always recommend too, especially on a larger roof, this one's kind of small so it's kind of hard to do this exactly, but that uh, you kind of get more of a, um, a random stair step going, not exactly eight inches, you know, perfect stair step, kind of keep it a little bit random. That helps from the, from the interior view uh, when you see it from the underside that you don't have everything lined up real perfect and that uh, just really helps for the, for the aesthetics of the, uh, of the product. I'm always going to keep my cut pieces and scraps close by for a situation like this. A lot of times if I'm real close to a hip or something like this, I might go for a bigger overlap just because i got such a small piece there. So I might just go ahead and overlap that one there, you know, four or five inches. Alright, this is a good example of what happens on the opposite end of a hip. When you just let the pieces run long, and I start it over from this side. So I'm going to trim these. Again, going about three inches past the center line, trimming straight down. And then I'm going to trim the corners off. It's real important that we maintain this uh, pattern. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this dimension here in relation to the hip shingle is real important for a consistent looking hip. All right, for the hip installation, this is actually a really important part uh, to get to get right, and this is probably 
one of the more complicated ones to show on video um, just because there's a lot going on here. Um, we're using the hip shingles, the hip ridge shingles, which is the same component here uh, for these. One thing always, these things come in the box, they're, they're packed pretty tight. So I always want to kind of loosen them up a little bit. I call it loosening. I'm just kind of doing that number to them to kind of get them out of their flat packed status. All right, so we got three pieces here that made up our eave detail. And so we have this little triangular area here that needs to be filled in. Uh, we want to continue that, that thick built up eave detail. So as you can see here, we left our, our fasteners back away from um, the center line of the hip here previously when we installed the, the field. So the reason we did that is this. So we can peel back these layers and kind of weave in these hip shingles. So I'm going to kind of show you real quick uh, without nailing them in yet kind of how I'm doing that. And so one thing I'm looking for here is I'm paying real close attention to this little area here. And this is where we need to have kind of a little bit of an artistic eye just to keep this detail here nice and full. Um, depending on your roof pitch, you, you know, there's a couple different techniques we can use to keep this full. Usually on a steeper pitch, it's not as, not as hard because the roof's more vertical. The lower the pitch, you might have to add a few extra pieces in here to keep that volume on this corner. So just keep that in mind, there's not an exact set piece count here. I'm just really using my eye to make sure I've got this filled in nicely and it kind of matches the rest of the eave. And so what we're doing really is we're starting here and I'm just centering this piece right there on the, on the hip line like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring these back down and fasten through. But you can see there with just one piece, I've, I'm kind of, I've kind of got a, a little bit of a thin spot here. So I'm actually going to layer in a couple of different pieces there to kind of create that much fuller eave detail. And I'm also going to kind of uh, maybe bring one down a little lower to kind of match the, the you know, the, the, the overhang of the, the three piece eave. And I might put one here and then go up three inches and put another. And then I might come up a few more inches and put another. And that's just to start the eave off. And then once I get this filled in nicely and I like how that looks, from there up, I'm only just using one, one piece per, per course. And it's kind of the same detail. We're just lifting these, these two corners here. I'm just lifting these two corners up and I'm tucking the piece underneath like this. So centered on there, you can kind of see how that lays in there. And I'm popping a fastener back in here and back over here. And then I'm laying these field shingles on top of that and just putting a couple nails in right here. And now you can see why I cut this and kept that three inch. So what we don't want to do is we want to have the hip shingles blend with the field shingles. And so what we're doing is we're bringing these field shingles over as far as we can so we get good coverage for that nail, but not too far where we start to, to come past here where these uh, fronds are running in this direction that we kind of transition nicely around the corner. And so that's why we maintain that three inches and then clip, clip these corners off. That's why it's important, uh, those dimensions there. And that's just to kind of blend nicely with this this hip, make a nice round corner, very, very natural in appearance. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, get these pieces installed. Um, we're going to bring the camera in a little tight for some of these uh, areas in here. And again, this is a little bit hard to shoot just because it's a little tough to kind of see exactly what's going on, but we'll do our best to kind of demonstrate that. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this uh, installed. I'm going to have the camera come in a little close and get some tight shots of that. All right, so again here, I'm just looking for length. I want the length to match the rest of my structure here, so. I'm locating the, the lowest pearl in here and getting a couple nails into that, so. This next one I'm going to bring in, you know, three inches up from this one. So I'm kind of creating that nice layered effect. All right, here's a good example of how this, this merges nicely. You see how this comes across and it blends nicely. But you see over here on this side, I don't like how this comes over so far because 
the direction of my hip piece is going this way, my field patch is coming too far over. So always keep an eye on these details. These are, these are kind of a little more artistic. So I'm going to trim this back because I don't like how far it comes over. So just like that. See now it blends nicely with that. And again, we want to manipulate the corner like this. Come in here. We want a nice natural appearance to that. So feel free to get artistic with it and mess it up a little bit and use extra pieces when necessary to create different effects. But this is kind of the basics. Now see right here, I've got this, this kind of curving down right here. Now if I was to come in and just go up to the next purlin right here and drop one in right there, that works okay. But I want a little more volume right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put one in at a half position so you can see my point is actually not even landing up near the purlin. I'm going to go ahead and just nail it here and here. I'm actually going to cut that off. I'm going to cut that little piece off so you can't see that point from the inside. Um, you can leave it. It's not that big of a deal. It's kind of behind the wrapper there, but I'm going to go ahead and fasten here, fasten there. And what I'm doing with that little intermediate piece there, not completely necessary, but I'm just adding a little more texture down here. I'll come to the top here and get a couple extra fasteners in here. Alright, so this right here is kind of my little more artistic portion, kind of getting this thing filled in and looking nice. So from here on up, I'm just going to put one piece per course. Um, I've never found it necessary to get anything, or, you know, too detailed on here. It's pretty, pretty straightforward from here on out. So what I'm doing again is just to kind of give you an idea, I'm laying that hip shingle in there. I got the point right here, right up to the to the purlin. But I'm going to be putting my nails down here in the lower purlin. You can see right here the top of the last course there. And then again, these pieces fold on top. Then I'm going to nail through up here. Now these pieces are all pretty consistently trimmed. They blend in nicely, so I shouldn't have to do any more trimming on there unless I just kind of have a piece that looks a little out of place. But I should be able to run up for the rest of these pieces, pop the nails in them, good to go. I've got my hip shingles installed all the way here to the last course. So kind of like we did over here in the field where we installed a shingle that was extended up past the ridge and we cut it off. We do the exact same thing with the hip on a situation like this. So we'll put the, the hip shingle on, extend it up, you know, six inches or so. We can drop a couple of nails here. The ridge shingles will cover all those up when we come back around with the ridge. We've got our field uh, fashion installed, we got our hip installed, obviously our eave. And if you remember when we were installing the eave, we had a couple of those pieces puckering up. If you notice now, it actually creates like a lot of natural texture, like this here. Don't be afraid of things like this, because uh, that actually adds to a lot of the natural texture. And you'll kind of see here where I kind of uh, did a little artistic, you know, thing with my hip shingles. I kind of put, you know, two or three pieces here to start. It just creates a natural kind of curve there. I kind of, you know, work these pieces in. But, uh, but yeah, so don't be afraid of things like this. I actually love that because it adds that natural texture. We have our valley here. So it's important that it's framed similar to this where our purlins run all the way 
into the center of the valley. So the way we're going to do the valley is we're actually going to take a full field shingle and cut it in half. So these are 30, uh, just about 36 inches, so we're going to cut it in half, make two pieces 17, 18 inches. So we're not going to fold this flap here. We're not going to do anything with this. We're going to leave this just like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold this directly into the center. And you can see there I'm bringing this little, this little flap here. I'm actually bringing that right to the point. Um, I'm going to try to get that nice and centered. And then we're going to nail this thing in here and here. And then we're going to trim this off. We'll make sure that stays nice and tight into the valley. So we're going to continue installing these one per course all the way up and then we'll actually bring our field shingles all the way into the valley here. All right, as you see, we brought our valley all the way up to the, to the peak of the roof. Now we're going to bring our field shingles and just bring them right on top of the valley we created here. I'm going to go ahead and cut an angle on the shingle as it goes into the valley here. So I'm just going to kind of line that up and create an angle there. I'm going to hold the shingle a couple inches out of the center line there. It doesn't have to go all the way in. But as we get these pieces built up, you'll see how much volume of actual thatch ends up creating a really nice realistic valley. I'm going to keep my nails uh, probably four to five inches out of the center line of the, uh, the valley. Now when it comes to the, the built-up eave detail, I'm going to run this piece here because it's the second layer in. I don't need to kind of cut an angle or anything. I'm just going to run that in there so it comes directly into the, uh, the valley there.
I've got the, uh, the left side of my valley done here. I'm going to do the right side next. Same exact technique. I'm going to cut an angle on the shingle. All right, one thing, guys, I want you to always remember, this is real important uh, for texture on the final product, is when this stuff comes out of the box, again, like we talked about, don't be afraid to mess that stuff up a little bit. We extended all of our field shingles over this gable end, you know, sort of randomly. The whole object here is to get these shingles here and have them wrap around this gable end. And that's going to create like a nice thick look on your gable end. Uh, most of the time I'm looking to wrap these things all the way around um, kind of the back side and I'll fasten it to the back side of this here with a couple of nails. I'm going to start here at the eave and then work my way up to the peak. wrap these two around like that. And right here on this end piece, I'm going to have to kind of get uh, a little artistic and manipulate that to kind of follow the, the angle of the eave there. So that looks pretty good there, I like that. You can see right here at the peak here, you have to get a little artistic getting this all fit together. I got my other side wrapped here, just like we did on the, the first side here. So this is what kind of happens if you don't kind of manipulate this end, it kind of creates this weird little point here. So. so this detail right here, this little area right here at the peak, this is always one that uh, I get a lot of questions on. So as you can see, I've got this piece wrapped over here and kind of cut here. So this, this is where you have to get um, just a little bit more detail oriented. You don't have to get it's not an exact science to it. Again, just creating the look. So this little area here, I'm, when the ridge shingle goes on, there's going to be a little area right here where these fasteners potentially could be visible. I'm going to use some uh, some scrap pieces of shingle here. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm actually going to put this piece on here um, somewhat uh, backwards. So this, this piece is actually upside down. And I'll just pop a couple of nails in like this. And I'll wrap that thing around. Same thing here. For the ridge installation, we're going to use the hip and ridge shingles. So we're going to install these centered 
on the ridge like this. My goal is to fasten these things at the lowest point I can get a nail on right here to kind of create that triangular effect to hold that down. At the end of a gable, for instance, we saw how we kind of filled this in, to create some volume here. I'll actually come in and on the, on the ridge portion of the install, kind of do the same thing. So I'll take a piece like this and uh, I'll actually probably fold this in half like this. But what I'll do is I'll actually kind of manipulate these pieces down because at the end, when we're done with the uh, ridge installation, we'll actually take a heat gun and kind of heat that up and make it droop down. You don't have to use a heat gun. You can kind of manually manipulate it like this. But um, <clears throat> I've just gotten in, in practice of using a heat gun. So you see that? That'll kind of uh, help fill in that, that area on top give it a real natural appearance. So I'm going to install this just directly to the uh, framing. As far as the start of the ridge shingles here, I'm actually going to bring one out to kind of match the ends of this. Get nice and centered. What I want to do there is I want to get probably four nails per piece um, as, as, as far down each side as I can. So if you can reach into the next per one down, that's, that's great. Um, but as I start here, we're going to do eight inch on center. So these things will go eight inch on center. But at the beginning of like a gable end here, I'll actually start out with uh, my first one here. And then I'll actually put one four inches or so. It's a little bit tighter exposure starting off here and that's just to create a little more, more volume here and you'll see when we do the heat gun how uh, why I did that just because it just creates a little more volume there to more natural appearance so When installing the ridge on a hip, you can see previously we had this uh, last hip piece here kind of folded up on top here. I'm going to kind of do the same detail I did on the gable end, and that's to start out um, with one fully extended onto the, so the solid portion is extending over the last hip shingle there. Again, we'll come back and actually use the heat gun to get that to lay down nicely. Kind of the same detail. I'll start off with one and then do one at a four inch exposure. And then from there I'll go eight inches. When we have a ridge uh, coming from two directions into a valley here, this creates a little bit of a challenging scenario here. There's a couple different ways to do it, but the way I'm going to do this here is I'm going to take a shingle on the back side here <coughs> and run it up like this. I'm going to fasten it on these back corners here, and I'm actually going to fold this tip and create like a little valley right there, and then I'll fasten it here and here. And then we're going to come back over with these pieces like this. All 
All right, so I've got this piece laid in here. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually going to lay a piece in to the valley here. So I've, I've, I've turned this piece upside down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend it past our center line here a little bit. I'm gonna put a couple of nails right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna fold this over like this. So those nails now are kind of like blind nailed there. They're back inside there. And I'm gonna come over on this side here and uh, actually I'm gonna bring it into the valley just a little bit more like the nail right there. Gonna wrap that around like that. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Here on the ridge, we've uh, got the ridge thing that's kind of overhanging this little gable end here. And uh, it kind of looks a little unfinished right here. So what I'm gonna do is actually take a heat gun and just put a little heat on the underside of these. Just let them kind of droop down and, and it covers this little area up here. Here on the hip, we've got the, the ridge shingles here. A lot of times I just leave it like that. I actually like, kind of like that little more natural look. But if you want to you know, kind of get that a little more smoothed down, same detail, we can just keep from underneath, let it, let it droop.